Cats and Elfins. Mm -hmm. So who was Sylvia Townsend Warner? Sylvia Townsend Warner was a successful and pretty famous writer. Um, fa became famous from 1926 when she published um, her best known novel, Lolly Willows, which is about witchcraft. And then she went on to have a pretty successful career right until the 1970s when she was writing the short stories about Elfin, <clears throat> which were a complete departure from her her norm. She began with fantasy, she wrote realist fiction and historical fiction and a lot of poetry, essays, one biography, and then at the end of her life she wrote fantasy short stories for The New Yorker. <clears throat> The stories in Of Cats and Elfins are my own selection of fantasy fiction that she didn't publish in Kingdoms of Elfin, which was her last short story collection that she put together herself. So it's a continuation of Kingdoms of Elfin because we have the last four Elfin stories that were not in Kingdoms of Elfin. We also have a short story that was republished in this collection, which came out after her death, and it's a story about a wood dryad and why it is not safe to go for a bicycle ride with a dryad. And I've always loved that story. I think it's terrific. Um, the Elfin stories are in here, another post posthumous collection. But the main part of, of Cats and Elfins are the stories in this book, which is the Cat's Cradle book, which is a collection no one has ever heard of. It is utterly obscure. And it's very odd because... I think it's obscure because it's fantasy. Um, Sylvia Townsend Warner and fantasy, they don't seem to go together well in the public eye. Fantasy writers, like her, readers, love her very much, but the, the general reader who loves Sylvia Townsend Warner usually discounts the fantasy apart from Lolly Willows, because that's also a feminist. So this book, The Cat's Cradle Book, was published in 1940 in America during the Second World War. Couldn't be published in Britain because of the war, because of paper shortages. And 20 years later, Chateau and Windus brought it out in Britain. That's a long time. So she clearly thought there wasn't much success likely, otherwise she would have pushed for it to come out. And it is fairy stories purportedly told by one cat to her kittens, which sounds a bit sentimental and twee, but it's not. It's continuations of well-known fairy tales. It's extrapolations from fairy tales. So you get more stories about the Marquis of Carabas who is, of course, from Puss in Boots. You get an extension of the Bluebeard story, which Angela Carter also made famous. But the principal story in this collection is a really long introduction, which is actually an autobiographical fairy tale involving Sylvia Townsend Warner herself and her lover, Valentine Ackland, in which Valentine is turned into a young man. Sylvia crashes her car, has to stay at the house, which is full of cats, and the cats talk. So Valentine and Sylvia talk to this large population of cats in the house. So it is highly fantastical, it's very, very idiosyncratic, and it's just a crime that it's been lost for so long that it simply hasn't been republished. So I was determined to bring the elfin stories out and the cats together, so I have to call it Off Cats and Elfins. Who, who will the book appeal to then? It'll certainly appeal to Sylvia Townsend Warner fans, of which there are many. Um, fantasy fans, people who want to read fairy stories reimagined, and also people who like cats. There's an awful lot of cats in this book. I personally am not particularly keen on cats, I don't mind them, but I don't want one. Um, so I think you've got something for everyone here. Was Sylvia Townsend Warner a cat? She you was love her? very much so. I don't think they had fewer than two cats during her and Valentine's lives together. Sometimes they had three, but yeah, cats were big in their life. What's what's the mood of the of the stories in in the collection? Dark, dark and sardonic. People die, dreadful things happen. A phoenix burns and the whole village goes down. You know, there's no holds barred. This is this is um, dark fantasy. I think is the best way of describing it. Fantasy within the fairy tale um, subgenre. But yes. <clears throat> so it's not children's stories by this, any means. These are not children's stories. Um, no, because no, they're not children's stories. Some children may enjoy them hugely, but you might wish to read them first before you allow your children near them. Why did you want to publish the book? Because it's been lost for so long, this one. Um, and I wanted to bring out the other Elfin stories, because the four Elfin stories that did not make it into Kingdoms of Elfin, 
Um, Sylvia obviously rejected them for Kingdoms of Elfin when she made that selection, but three of them are absolutely top drawer stuff. One of them is a little less good, but those those three are just superb. I'm, I don't understand why they didn't get in. So they, they alone are worth republishing on their own rights. And because I wanted to make a complete sweep of the remaining fantasy short fiction, the Dryad story had to go in as well. But I think with that, we have now got all of Sylvia's short fantasy fiction. So it would appeal to completists as well? It would definitely appeal to completists, yes. And if only the rights to Lolly Willows were available, I would take that too, but they're not. Another publisher has them. Can you tell us a little about the book jacket you've chosen? The book jacket, well, for those of you who remember Kingdoms of Elfin, um, it has a cover by Arthur Rackham, who was an Edwardian illustrator who was contemporary with Sylvia's childhood. So I've gone back to him to choose an image of Undine, who was a water spirit, which is relevant to the fantasy nature of the stories, but also the expression on Undine's face, as you'll see from the cover, is demonic. And I think it suggests quite strongly that these are not light, fluffy, sentimental stories for about kittens. These are dark, and there will be blood. And, and when does the book come out? This one comes out January 2020.